This is the Sideline Slice, presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers. Here's your host, Jessica Cooty, and Huskers Radio Network Analyst, Jeremiah Searles. And just like that, it is game week. Welcome everybody into our very first game week episode of the Sideline Slice with Jeremiah Searles. I'm Jessica Cootie. Game week is here, finally. About freaking time. I mean, shoot, I feel like we've been talking about this since <laughs> I've wrapped up for Iowa. It's like, oh my gosh, it's ever. And is it just me or did August just drag? It like did. June and July flew, right? Like, like, holy crap, July's over. And then August has just been like crawling along, just anticipation of coming up for game day. I know. It's just there's so many questions and you it, it's hard to know. You can go to practice, but it's hard to know exactly what you've got in a football team until you see them playing a game. And so I feel like, you know, you can watch all you want and say, you know, the things that you see, but until you actually see it, it's who knows. Oh yeah, I mean, you just throw spaghetti against the wall and you <laughs> see what sticks in August, right? Like that looks good, this looks good, but until the real bullets are flying and there's real life consequences for mess ups and there's real life uh, like celebrations for big plays, like seven points versus just a, oh, run it out and blow the whistle. I mean, that's where you find what truly makes up a team. That's what you find where the culture and the character of this team is going to be. And shoot, it's going to be on display this week here very, very soon. What is your perspective? Because, you know, this season opener compared to other season openers with so many unknowns and coming out of the gate with another conference game and, and in a foreign country in Ireland, <laughs> all these things. But then just the magnitude of week zero, all eyes are going to be on Nebraska for this game because everybody's ready for college football. Yep. And this is one of the bigger the biggest game on, on Saturday. Just what is your perspective of going into this season opener compared to years past? You know, I, there's part of me that feels bad for Coach Frost because, like, he doesn't just get, like, normal openers, right? <laughs> I mean, year one gets rained out. They were going on the road to Illinois last year. Now we're going to Ireland. Like, I promise you, Scott Frost, can I just get, like, an 11 a.m. kickoff <laughs> in Memorial Stadium on week zero against some slappy opponent? Like, please. But that's not the way it is, you know? And so I think that you look at this game and you're looking at, okay, what do we want to see? What are we looking at? And because it is a conference game and because you don't really have tape on what Northwestern is going to be this year, the good news is Northwestern doesn't change a lot, right? Like they are who they are. They run the same offense. They didn't have a ton of turnover. So you can look at last year's tape and get a pretty good idea of what they are versus you flash back a year ago. We were talking about we have no idea what Brett Bielma's Illinois team is going to look right, like, right? right? So there is a little bit more of an advantage this year than there was last year. But expectation-wise for this Husker team is they just have to really focus as it's not about Northwestern, it's about us. It, it, we can't worry about a lot of what they're going to do. We have to just go out there and execute what we are going to do as a Husker team because we have so many new pieces. You know, for once you get into football season, it is just such a rigorous schedule. It's mm. the same thing every single day, right? And so getting into that game week, even though they're kind of in that schedule a little bit this week, you know, next week they're going to get into that very first game week on the road, right? And while some people are comparing it a little bit to a bull trip, Scott Frost, this team, this is not a bowl trip. We haven't earned that. It's a business trip. So, but you've been a part of bowl trips that you go and there's kind of stuff going on outside of it, figuring out how to get into that routine in a hotel for an entire week. What does it take to go attack a game week and be prepared to play in a game when you're in that type of situation? Well, first of all, people are like, oh, it's like a bowl trip. None of these players have been on a bowl trip, right. you know, like, so it, it, there's nothing to compare it for for them. And that's a really interesting point. You know, Northwestern's been on bowl trips. They understand what it's like to have to go on the road and practice. This is brand new for basically everyone in this locker room. Right. You know, so that's going to be something that they really have to figure out. My hope would be that this past week leading up to leaving for Ireland, that they've been kind of doing like a mock game week, right? So that it's kind of like a mock, here's what to expect, here's what we're going to do for next week, and just kind of a dress rehearsal, right? But it is different. It is how you get your rest, how you get your recovery, how you do all of that stuff on the road is so much different than we do it back here in the comfort of Memorial Stadium. So very interesting how they're going to do that. But a lot of that's going to be based off the leadership from the team, right? You have the unity council, you're going to have the captains. That's going to be very important that they are very vocal about, listen, this is a business trip. Yeah, it's fun. We're in Ireland and there's going to be events. There's going to be things that we can make memories and that we can remember this for a very long time. But if we lose this game, it's going to be the longest plane ride hold of all time. Like we cannot lose this game. It's a, it's a must win on week zero. And I hate saying that and I really do, but it's a very reality for where this Husker football team is at. So you have to approach it every single day like business as usual. We're just in a different place conducting business. I'd be interested to hear your take on, okay, so, you know, going into a new season week zero, you said you kind of know what Northwestern's going to do, mm -hmm. but Northwestern doesn't know as much about what Nebraska's going to do. So how do these two teams approach 
preparing for teams right out of the gate that not a lot there's no tape to watch from this season yeah you know you, you take a peek at last year's tape as far as what Northwestern did towards the end of the season right and you say okay what was their schematically finishing up last year what did they like to run what were they good at right and you had an all off season to plan for that then so like I said the Huskers have it a little easier now you flip it over to coach Fitzgerald and Northwestern staff they're gonna have to kind of piece together like okay what did the Husker defense look like at the end of last year playing against Iowa and even against them kind of later in the season right what did they do to us and then also you're gonna watch a lot of pit tape right like what was Mark Whipple's offense like at Pitt what did he do at Pitt what are some things that he really ran well that you know he's gonna carry over to this Nebraska offense right things that there you can't plan for everything but there's gonna be things that like okay he did this really well there so obviously we're gonna see it here but the thing you can't plan for is guys like Palmer and guys like Grant and guys like Allen and those dudes that are new that there's you're not going to go watch high school tape. You're just not going to do right. that. So you're just going to have to adapt and overcome. So you're going to see a lot of my opinion. You're going to see a lot of base defense and just Northwestern running very base stuff early in the game just so they can kind of get their feet wet and get a flow for what is this Husker offense? What do they want to do? Are they going to try and kill us with the quick passing game early? Or are they going to try and establish the run early? What are they going to do? And then the thing that Coach Fitzgerald and the Northwestern team does so well all the time is adjust because they're really smart guys. I couldn't even get into Northwestern. They recruited me like, you want to come here? I was like, yeah. They're like, what'd you go to your ACT? I was like 21. They're like, ever thought about retaking it? I was like, <laughs> No, they're like, well, have fun somewhere else, you know? So very intelligent players over there. So they can adjust on the fly very well. So I'd expect to see some stuff early from them and then see a really good adjustment for them maybe in the second quarter at half and then see how we adjust back to that. Yeah, on the flip side of that, it, when you're Mark Whipple going into this, and again, we haven't been to all the practices, mm -hmm. we don't know, but what, what do you think his game plan his approach to this game will be with this offense i don't know and it's <laughs> really hard for me to sit here and go uh -huh. i don't know what our identity is you know i have i've only been able to go to the one practice and you know when you look at it, it's like okay there's a couple options here one do we try and get qb1 in a rhythm early with the quick passing game with the slants with the hooks with the play action quick shots to vocalek and palmer and whoever you know just try and get him in a rhythm because he's brand new too it's not like you have adrian back there who you know what you're going to get so do we want to start him off right? Or do we want to come out and be like, hey, beef eaters up front, let's set the tone for the season. Let's pound the rock. Let's, hey, let's get efficient runs. Let's get moving up and down the field. Let's blow these guys off the ball. Or is it like kind of like, hey, let's just throw the freaking bomb at these dudes right away. Reverses, unbalanced and wild formations, five wide, four by one. Like it could be one of any of those things. And I think that's something that I'm going to be looking for in the first quarter is like, okay, what were the first 25 scripted plays? Everyone scripts your first 25 plays, college, NFL, everyone. That will be very telling of what this offense is going to look like going forward because those 25 plays should be the best 25 plays that they practice from spring to fall camp mm. into the game day. Interesting. All right, well, when we're talking Northwestern, I know where you're going to want to start, right there up front <laughs> with the offensive line. And uh, Peter Skaronsky, who is one of the best, if not the best, tackle in college football is he as good as advertised yes he's yeah. he's phenomenal you know he's a phenomenal he'll might be ot1 um coming off the board for the 2023 nfl draft wish he would call me back <laughs> um but you know i think he's an extremely talented player you know and they have a really good pedigree of springing good players out right i mean rashawn slater was there just two years ago and he was an all pros a rookie in the nfl last year so they have a very good o-line coach they have a very good development program there for players because none of those guys are five-star recruits when they get there but they've developed them so well through the weight room and the way that they play that they're coming out. So yeah, he's a very good player. And you know, that's exciting for me because it's really gonna give me a chance to see what Garrett Nelson, Caleb Tanner, and those guys on the edge are really made of. You know, it's like, hey, go against this guy and see, and we'll see how big of a jump you made from last year to this year. And you'll get to test your medal against one of the best of the best right away. To me, that's that's a, the matchup. That's the key matchup because it's that's their strength because they've got four guys coming back, a lot of uh, experience on that offensive line, perhaps their most dependable, most experienced unit mm -hmm. on that football team. But then on the flip side of that, we've heard how good those edge guys are for Nebraska and how good they've been with O'Shawn Mathis in addition to get, uh, Garrett Nelson and Caleb Tanner and then the depth that they've been able to add on the defensive line. So how do you go about, I mean, how important is that battle in the trenches and, and being able to match what Northwestern's physicality that they're going to bring? Yeah, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on what Chin's game plan is, right? Does Chin's want to just, hey, we we're relying on you guys up front to get to the quarterback, right? Which is what we need to get to as a defense. We cannot rely on sending Reimer or sending whoever the new Jojo Doman is off the nickel and trying to scheme up ways to get pressure on the quarterback. 
we need to be able to look at the guys up front and be like, hey, Ty Robinson, Garrett Nelson, Caleb Tanner, Mathis, all you dudes, get to the quarterback, right? Don't make us send pressure. Win your one-on-one matchups. Get after these dudes and let us play coverage on the back end and make this quarterback make a mistake, and then we can take advantage of it. So that's why I want to see if those if those guys are going to be like, hey, we got this, Chins, you do your thing on the back end, and then when it's crunch time, dial up something fun, right? Dial up the pressure that you're so good at doing. We saw him do last year. So I'm really excited to look at that matchup up front. But at the same time, if you're Northwestern, you're like, how do we neutralize that? It's the quick passing game. Mm -hmm. How do you neutralize? How do you frustrate a defensive line? The quick passing game, a la Purdue last year, right? O'Connell came in here, or O'Connell, whatever his name is, came in here and completed like 48 passes, right? And none of them were for 60, 70 right. yards. It was eight yards, four yards, six yards, just dink and dunk. And that frustrates a defensive lineman to no end because you have no shot. By the time you got your third step in the ground, the ball's out. So, you know, it's got to be tight coverage on the back end, getting up in these guys' faces, pressing them, Tommy Hill, Quentin Newsom, all these dudes, like, get up there, challenge these guys early, and give your front a chance to actually get to the quarterback and affect his feet. So, with Northwestern, Ryan Helensky was oh, a starter. it's game week. Let's go. <laughs> That's funny. So Ryan Helensky was their starter last year. Mm -hmm. They did not have a good year offensively. No. I mean, they were one of the worst, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. But he's been in a quarterback battle, whereas North, uh, Nebraska has named their starter. Northwestern has not, but he's played most of the football. And then they have Brendan Sullivan, who's the redshirt freshman that they say has had a really good spring. So how do you go about that, not knowing which quarterback you're going to see? You know, I don't think it really matters mm -hmm. um, what quarterback you see there. It's not like we're talking about Kane Coulter, who was just such an electric athlete mm -hmm. that he could run all over the field, right? These are very much Trevor Simeon type guys, game managers. But the difference is, if you have a quarterback back there that just doesn't make mistakes and doesn't turn the ball over, Coach Fitzgerald is so good at being able to bounce back from bad years to good years that I'm not writing anything off for this team, right? Coach Fitzgerald has made a career out of, hey, we have a three and nine team and then the next year we're nine and three and we're playing in the Big Ten Championship, right? They know how to respond and they know how to bounce back and grow. So yeah, the quarterback position is really important, but I don't think it's a it's not something I'm super concerned about right. some guy, some new guy coming on the scene and just blowing the doors off like Kane Coulter did when he came in here, I think in 2011, when all of a sudden we're like, who the hell is this guy? And he's just <laughs> running up and down the field, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think they have that kind of electric athlete at quarterback. The difference will be, can this guy deliver the ball on time and can he deliver the ball well? But I do think they're going to probably try and establish the run a little bit more and take some pressure off of those guys, which makes it even that much more important for the Husker offense to get a lead and make him get back there and have to throw the ball 15 to 30 times this game. You, you mentioned Coach Fitzgerald. I know you have a lot of respect for him. He recruited you. But, you know, the, I, that was one of the things I was going to ask you. He has never had back-to-back -back bad seasons. It's, it is – if he has a losing season, like three and whatever, he goes to the Big Ten uh, championship game the next year. What is it about him that he does get his teams to bounce back so quickly? You know, it's just the fact that he has established and he has built a culture there that they all understand what it is. They all understand. Every player on that team knows their role. Every player on that team understands what is expected of them. They know they're never going to be the most talented team on the field. Never. I, they're not going to line up against anyone in the Big Ten and have the most recruits and the most hype and all that. But they also understand, like, if we do our job and we stay assignment sound and we don't beat ourselves, we're going to give ourselves a chance in every single football game. Because for the longest time, they were – for when they're good, they don't turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. And they find ways to get turnovers, right? That's what they do. And they play boring football. They just grind at you. And Fitzgerald knows that. And he understands because he'll take his team and and he's not going to come down on them. And he's not going to be like, listen, we got to be better. He just understands that he lives in a four-year growth period, right? He rises to the top in four years and he has a great season. Then he understands he's going to lose those guys and he's going to have to start over and rebuild. But he's done it so well. And a lot of that is just the approach he takes to his program. I mean, you can talk about two completely different approaches to this game in Ireland, right? Like I've listened to Coach Fitzgerald and I've listened to Coach Frost and Coach Fitzgerald's all about the college player experience, right? We're going to have a blast over there in Ireland and then these guys are going to make memories and we're going to do this we're going to do that and then you flip it over to coach frost and it's very business-like it's very hey we're here to win a football game we're here to do all those things and i mean the main difference there is lifetime contract at northwestern and it's no surprise scott frost has to win this year right mm -hmm. that's just where we're at as a program and so you know i think that that's just the difference a little bit in how he approaches things versus how we approach things there's no right or wrong way but he just knows who he is and he's just always stayed true to who he is part of that too is kind of what you were talking about earlier though is that these players here at Nebraska don't know what it's like to go. So you have to kind of 
probably yeah. harp on that like hey this is a business trip because you know for players that have been there and gone through it and understand the process of it it's a little bit different approach probably i mean what yeah, do you absolutely. say i mean coach frost has to keep these dudes between the white lines yeah right you've got to keep them between the white lines versus the coach fitzgerald and those guys there's players that have been to bowl games multiple times on that team that understand how to keep the younger guys in lines, right? It's a lot easier when the players are policing the players with the off the field stuff and the distraction stuff because they understand it. Versus if you have a team that no one understands what that's like because no one's been it, then it really falls on the coaching staff, the weight staff, the training staff to show these guys, hey, this is how this has to be done. Valentino's has been a Nebraska tradition since 1957. Get the big red double jumbo deal. Two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $18.29 each. Let me ask you this, because, I mean, again, you move from season, season to season, but those players that came here into Lincoln last year and were embarrassed, will they remember that? Absolutely. Are they remembering that going into this game? There's, I mean, Coach Fitzgerald, if you guys remember, he was fired up on that sideline. He was mad. There was some stuff going on between defense and offense that he was not happy about. And he'll remember that. You know, he, he may forgive, but I don't think he forgets. <laughs> you know, and none of those teams forget. You don't, rem you don't forget those as a player. You don't. I will never forget getting dirt stomped by Wisconsin 70 to whatever in the Big Ten Championship. I will never forget some of the blowout losses we have. Those are the ones that sit and stick with you for a long time. So this offensive line for Northwestern, particularly, who did not play well mm -hmm. against Nebraska last year, they will remember that. And they will have a little extra chip on their shoulder and a little extra fire. But at the same time, there's also that little bit of doubt. That little bit of doubt of the, oh boy, this could happen again, right? Like you try and creep that away, but it doesn't never just go away. It's important Nebraska makes that doubt a reality early in this football game. Okay, so on the flip side of that, and you know, there's Northwestern does have some some key pieces back on their defense, but they're also filling some some holes that they mm -hmm. lost players. But again, you know what you're going to get with Northwestern. So for this offensive line for Nebraska, that's got some new players, some guys that have a little bit of experience, some that are in new roles, all of that. What's the key for them in this first game? Just establish a physicality that the rest of the Big Ten is going to see. You know, everyone's going to watch this game. Like you said, it's week zero. But everyone's going to watch this game on the Big Ten side in the film room. The all 22, mm -hmm. the all telling, where you cannot yeah. hide, is going to get broadcasted against the entire Big Ten and across the whole country because everyone's going to look and say, what is the new Husker offense? And everyone starts with, well, the guys up front. Are they running off the ball? Are they getting after guys? What's their technique like? What's their? This is their first showing. This is your first impression. You only get one first impression in football, and it's week zero or week one. And so for this Husker offensive line, they need to come out and set the tone for what they want to be respected as going through the rest of the season. Or is it going to be more of the same of last year? And it can't be. It just physically can't be what it was last year. It has to be better. And I think it will be better. But at the same time, like you said, until you do it on Saturdays, it's right. just a giant question mark. Yeah, and, it, and for offenses and new offenses and new players, it typically takes some time to get clicking on all cylinders. I don't think, I mean, Hopefully they are, but I don't think it's going to be an offense that comes right out of the gate and is just full go, full throttle. So that being said, it, when it might take a couple weeks, three weeks or so to get that offense rolling, is there more pressure on the defense? I mean, like, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, and notoriously throughout all of football, even the NFL, defenses tend to seem to have the advantage the first few weeks because it is it just takes offenses longer to get in a rhythm versus defenses are just blind dogs and meat houses right see ball <laughs> sick ball that's all they got to do like offensive is much more schematic of how things work and it just takes a little bit more time to find that flow or find that rhythm and so yeah it is pressure on the defense which is why i said earlier is how important it is for us to get a lead and put that pressure on northwestern versus we don't want to have that pressure like we did against illinois last year yeah we're like against illinois last year we were behind and so now we're trying to throw the ball over the place and there's new receivers and new timing and all that you just don't want to put that pressure on especially a new quarterback right away you want to be able to say hey let's get the lead and then rely on our big dudes up front to establish the run because that's how you win in this league it's it's i mean it's a tale as old a time in the big 10. get the lead establish the run control the clock control the field position in the second half walk away with the victory it's not anything new that these i mean a lot of these defensive players felt that a year ago yep. you know and they were they took pride in that hey we're gonna go out there it's all right we got you we're gonna get a stop and get you the ball back so there is some players that are absolutely, they don't care if that's what they got to do. They, that's what they want to do. Guys like Luke Reimer and Garrett Nelson, those types of guys. So there are players that mm -hmm. are absolutely 
when you talk about maybe some of those big 12 players coming in that had elite offenses that, hey, the offense is going to go score for you every yeah. time. It's a little bit different mentality. Oh, yeah. I mean, you come from the big 12. It's like, I need one stop. <laughs> it's like, just give me one stop so I can <laughs> score 49 and they're going to score 42, right? Like, just give me one. And that's not the world that they live in here in the big 10. Yeah. It's just not it. Right. And there is something said about a badge of honor that a defense wears. It's like, hey, we're going to hold them to under 21 or we're going to hold them to under 17. But that's a hard way to make a living in the Big Ten. Right. You need to start having an offense that's like, hey, we're going to score 38 or we're going to score 28 or we're going to be a race to 30. Right. And then if the defense is like, shoot, we let up 21 and we score and we win by nine. Great. You know, that's the kind of mentality we have to have. I think this Husker offense has to get to the point where they're consistently scoring between 24 and 35 points a game. You know, I think that's kind of the sweet spot to win football games in the Big Ten anymore the more I watch it. And on the flip side, then that means the defense has to hold them to three touchdowns. And there was plenty of times last year that the defense did exactly that, and we just weren't able to get that extra touchdown or finish on that field goal or whatever it was where you take a three-win team to a six, seven, eight-win team very quickly. And so QB1 has been announced. Casey Thompson will take the first snaps. Coach Frost said more quarterbacks could potentially play, but it's going to be Casey getting the first team reps. So what do you need to see? What are you looking for out of Casey Thompson here in the first game? Yeah, you know, number one thing is game management. You know, uh, I, I don't care if he goes out there and has 200 yards passing or 500 yards passing. How does he operate the mm -hmm. offense? How quickly and how efficiently are they in and out of the huddle? How often is it you're running and trying to get guys lined up and everything like that all falls on the quarterback of being the commander of the team. You know, I don't care if you're new, you're great. If you're the starting quarterback, you are the general, the commander, the admiral, whatever you want to call it, of the Husker offense, if not the entire team. And, you know, so I want to see out of him his leadership, how things go, maybe if there is a little adversity, but also take care of the football. You know, number one, number the ball security is job security, man. Take care of the football. Make good decisions with the football. Don't force things that aren't there. Live to fight another day. All those things, which at Texas, I saw him force some stuff. I'm not going to lie. I remember watching him going, I know you have a big arm. I know you got a lot of talent, but like, hey, let's just take what the defense gives you and let's just stay and stay ahead of the sticks and do all those things. So I, I know it's a lot to ask for him out of a first quarterback, but he's not a brand new starter. You know, yeah. this isn't something where I'm like, I want to see how he starts for his first game. He's started a lot of football right. games. So there is the bar is much higher for him than it would say for a Logan Smothers or a Nick Heinrich or whatever it is, right? You know, the bar is much higher, so much more is expected. Nick Henrich's playing a... Not Nick Henrich. <laughs> he's playing quarterback now. I'm all over the place. It's game week. I'm excited. Leave me alone. You know what? We were literally were just talking about the Big 12. I think for him, he's going to have some pressure lifted off of him because he doesn't. Texas had to score every – you look every at that play. Oklahoma game. They every. had to score all the time. So on the flip side of that – He's not going to feel as much pressure every time he's got the football in his hands to go score. But he's got to understand. I mean, I know you got to think he's that. He's got to understand that, right? He's got to understand that, hey, if we just get three or four first downs and flip the field position against Wisconsin, that's okay. Like, that, yeah. there's, there's so much more complimentary football played in the Big, 12, Big Ten than there is the Big 12. He has to understand the mentality. Like, I don't have to force this because our defense hopefully isn't going to let him score on the very next play after we punt, right? Like, that's just the mentality that he's been in. And I think it may take a few games for him to adjust and understand the difference of managing an offense and understanding the field position game versus just like playing Madden and being like, we have to score every time. It's just such a different game than the Big 12. Speaking of flipping the field and field position, special teams. How excited are you to see the improvements, hopefully, that have been made there? I think my anxiety is higher than my <laughs> excitement. You know, I still like, I still, I don't want to have the butterflies every time we line up to kick an extra point. I just don't. I can remember on the sideline, I wouldn't watch half the time last year. Like, I'd be like, okay, I just didn't listen for the, the cheers or listen for the gasps. Like, it's one <laughs> of the two, right? And you just prayed you didn't hear the double thud, right? Like, thud, thud. So, I mean, I think they will be much more improved, right? I hope Frankie still bombs him out the back of the end mm -hmm. zone because that's a must, and he was huge for that last year. You saw Timmy hit a big field goal in the scrimmage? He did. There were some big field goals made in the scrimmage. So, I mean, if we can even sure up the special teams just to be – not negative, right? Just be, just be status quo. That is a massive improvement from last year. So I want to see that. I want to see that just to make all your extra points. If it's an inside 30 yard field goal, put it through the uprights. I'm not going to say if it's 40 and plus, you got to be perfect every time, but let's maybe go 50, 50 there. Maybe we got two of them go one for one or whatever it might be one for two. But you know, I think that that whole thing just, it has to be better. It can't be worse. It just physically can't be worse. It's crazy because in my entire career um, here, Oklahoma, when I was working covering Oklahoma State, everywhere that I've been, this is the most going into a football season, covering a football team that it's 
there's so many things to watch for and intriguing things to be paying attention to, but I think special teams for me is at the top of the list to see how, just how mm -hmm. much that's improved. Because you have to play three phases of football to have a good football team. And I mean, that just totally, even though they were in games at the end, the momentum swings that happen with special teams plays and big special teams plays and negative special teams plays, it just can make a huge difference in a ball game. So for me, that's one of the things I'm most intrigued to see out of this football team. 100%. You know, one of my good friends, Pat Smith, he was the kicker for me when he was a senior. Um, and I can remember him saying that he felt like the extra point was the biggest momentum play in college football. And I kind of looked at him, he goes, think about it. You go on a big, long drive and scores an offense, and then you miss an extra point or it gets blocked or whatever, like you immediately just flipped all the momentum back over mm -hmm. to the defense, like back over to the other team. Right. Because they feel like they now have the energy versus you go down the field, you score, you knock the extra point, and like you feel like you keep your foot on their throat. Right. Right. So that was a big thing. You think back to Oklahoma last year, right? You go down, you score, they block the extra point, and they take it back down, and that stadium erupts, and now all the momentum's back. A stadium Oklahoma. that was quiet before. Right. That. A stadium that was quiet. Dead like, silent. Flips everything, right? Mm -hmm. And same thing with a punt, right? You pin them deep. You don't, even if they get a 15 yard punt return, the momentum flips, right? So there's just all these momentum plays that special teams, the true momentum giver and taker of a football team. So you're absolutely right. That's a number one thing to watch. But tell me if I'm wrong. It almost feels like we have a whole new coaching. Like it's like we're going into the season with like a new head coach almost because it's like the uncertainty is just through the roof on really all three phases. Yeah, I mean, and, and even just the pieces like Oshawn Mathis, he's right? been pegged as the number one influential defensive line transfer in all of college football. How's he going to look coming from the Big 12? Because you said it. It's a big adjustment going from the Big 12. You did it one season mm -hmm. where you went from one to the other. What's that adjustment like? Then how do some of those guys like Ty Robinson, is he going to take another step forward? What is Garrett Nelson going to look like? So even the guys that have been here, been around, there's still questions. What kind of step do they take? Mm -hmm. And then the secondary, it's completely oh, new, yeah. you know, which we haven't even talked Coin about. Flip. And then offense, like offense is like all new. So, yeah. I mean, it's just like there's people that are back that you still have questions about that you're intrigued to see. The question marks across the board far outweigh the knowns. Yeah. Far out. I mean, it's not even close. And that's just an unsettling feeling a little bit, but it's also an exciting yes, feeling, right? Because it's exciting. change is not always a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, and I was just up in Minnesota the last couple, uh, last week talking about for their, for their joint practices with the Vikings and the Niners and talking to a bunch of my buddies, Harrison Smith, Eric Kendricks, all those guys. And I was like, man, how is it? How's the new staff? And they're like, it's just good to have some change. Like nothing negative. Like I loved them. I love the old staff, but sometimes change is just what you need to shake things up and elevate to that next level. So I'm hoping that's the same thing here because I did. I loved the old staff. I loved Coach Hell. I loved Coach Austin. I loved all those guys. But sometimes change is just a necessary part of what football is. Okay, so all of this being said, I mean, what, I guess, is the number one thing that you're going to be looking for out of this team come this first game? You know, the, the number one thing, and I'll start on offense, the number one thing is I'm not expecting them to come out and look bowl game ready on week zero. I'm yeah. just not. But the thing I am looking for is two things. No sacks, no negative plays, right? And what I mean by negative play is, like, if it's second and six and we run the football, it needs to not be third and eight. It needs to not be third and seven. It needs to be positive plays. The negative plays last year killed us, especially in the run game. Yeah. You know, those type of things just can't happen. And then the no sacks. I'm not saying no hits, no hurries, no pressures. I'm not saying that. I'm saying no sacks, right? Mm -hmm. Don't get this new quarterback uncomfortable early. Right. Make him feel comfortable back there in the pocket and allow him to build the confidence that he needs to deliver the football in the right way. And then you build off of that, and then you hit the midseason point. And then the midseason point, you're going, okay, hey, no sacks, no hits, no hurries. And now we're talking about efficient runs. Now every run should be a four-plus yard run. Now if it's second and six, it's third and two at a minimum, right? Those are the progression that I look to see. And then on the defensive side of the ball, more sacks, <laughs> more negative plays, right? Like uh -huh. those are the things last year that we did really well. We got to the quarterback at times. But the thing I thought we did really well at times last year was eliminating their run game and forcing them to throw the football. Right. You know, so I'd like to see that here is, hey, create some negative plays and get this offense that's not built to play in third and long. They're just not. They don't have the athletes on the edge to do it. Force them into third and eights. Force them into third and tens and make them do things that they're uncomfortable with. And make all your kicks, special teams. <laughs> just make all your kicks and don't allow any big returns. Okay, so um, I guess... We'll keep some of the things the same, new name, but we'll keep it the way we close this. So give me your three keys. Yeah, you know, my three keys um, the, on defensive side of the ball is you got to have two plus takeaways. 
Okay. I think I think two plus takeaways in this game ices this game. You know, ices it. So that's number one. Takeaway is there. Um, special teams just be efficient. Be efficient on special teams. Just no again, negative. No place. negatives. I don't even care if there's a ton of positives. Just efficiency right. on special teams. And then the last one is just an efficient football team. No pre-snap penalties. No substitution errors. No dumb personal foul penalties. Like the things that cost us games last year from an immaturity standpoint. Those have to go away. Those have to now become the norm. And if those things go away in week zero, you're going to start and set the tone that that is now the standard going forward. So the no negative things and all that, that that's an all encompassing key there at the end because it affects all three phases. I mean, as far as like, hey, if you're a kicker, if you're a kicker on kickoff, don't kick it out of bounds, right? Like kick it through the uprights. If you're an offensive lineman, be styled in, so dialed into the snap count that there's no zero, there's zero possible way that you jump off sides. Right? And if you're a defensive lineman, watch the football. And when the play's over and the whistle's blown, no one cares about the whoever you are show. It's not about you. It's about the team. Do your job. Help the guy up. Get lined back up and go do it again. All right. Player to watch, offense, defense. Yeah, offense, obviously, is Casey Thompson. Right? It, that's, that's an easy one, right? Hey, how is he going to perform? It's his first time out there with the N on the side of his helmet. That's, a, that's an easy one. On defense, it's going to be kind of the all-encompassing, the edge players. Hey, Garrett Nelson, Oshan Mathis, Caleb Tanner versus that offensive front, especially Peter Skaronsky, right? Who's going to show, like, hey, that's one of the best guys in the in NCAA right now. Like, let's see who can get after him and set the tone. Because now you go after and you get after him, everyone's going to be watching you and be like, that's a guy to watch now, right? This is a tone setter for all of those guys on the other side. It's game week. It's freaking game week. <laughs> our first uh, sideline slice game week edition. Next week, we'll have a game under our belts. We'll be going into the first home game. So we're back every single week for you here on the sideline slice. So we're excited, obviously. Jeremiah is pumped. I am, and I'm sad I'm not going to <laughs> Ireland, but you better have a couple pints for me. I will, I will. All right, again, uh, thanks for to Valentino's Pizza for sponsoring us every single week, the official pizza of the Huskers. We'll have all the coverage for you in Ireland, Ireland right here on the Huskers radio network, and we'll have our typical pregame show starting for you for five hours before kickoff. So right here, all the coverage you want on the Huskers radio network. Thanks for coming in, and uh, let's go. Let's Absolutely. go win a football game. Go be red. Family traditions mean great food. With treasured Italian family recipes passed down for generations, Valentino's has become Nebraska's classic Italian tradition for 65 years.